The netback contracts were developed in 1985 and caused a delay in the development of spot markets. At that time, Saudi Arabia played the main role in the success of OPEC quota policy. In five years, the Saudis have cut production from 10 to 3.6 million barrels per day. But not all the other OPEC members shared in the effort made by the Wahhabi Kingdom. Saudi Arabia therefore renounced a policy of supporting the crude oil price in favor of recovering market share. To do that, the Saudis replaced official prices with a new trading system. This new system intended to be highly attractive to refineries at that time. The refining industry was depressed and margins were weak. So when Saudi Aramco offered the refiners a deal that guaranteed them a fixed margin per barrel, the refineries were highly receptive. Under the netback contract, the crude oil price was set by the price level of the finished petroleum products. In other words, the price per barrel of crude oil was the value of its product yield, less a margin for the refiner and the freight cost. The level of the refining margin and the freight were set out in the contract. To better illustrate this concept, let's examine a concrete example. Let's suppose that this barrel of oil yields 10% liquefied petroleum gas, 30% gasoline, 20% heavy fuel oil, and 40% asphalt. Let's now suppose that the prices for these petroleum products are as follows. Under the netback contract, the price of this barrel of oil is set out by the price level of the finished products. In our example, the price would be equal to 10%, which is the yield for LPG, times $10 per barrel, which is the price of LPG, plus 30% gasoline, times $20 per barrel, plus 20% heavy fuel oil, times the price of heavy fuel oil, which is $8 per barrel, plus 40% asphalt, times $12 per barrel. So the price of this barrel of oil would be $13.4 per barrel. From this price, we subtract the refining margin and the freight costs, which are set out in the contract. For the sake of illustration, let's assume that the refining margin was set out at $2 per barrel and the freight costs at $1 per barrel. Under these terms, the final price of this barrel of oil would be $10.4 per barrel. In this way, the refinery's profit is guaranteed. These contracts were so successful in generating Saudi sales that the other OPEC countries followed with the same path in order to maintain their sales, thus increasing the volumes subject to such contracts. Even North Sea producers considered its adoption, but they rapidly decided not to follow when the hidden effect of this system was revealed. Naturally, refiners wished to maximize their profits as they had a fixed profit per barrel all they had to do to achieve maximum profitability was to maximize their throughputs. The necessary crude oil being readily available because the OPEC countries wanted to maximize their sales. The consequent increase in supply resulted in product prices collapsing and therefore to a collapse in the price of crude oil. And that was the oil counter shock. It was quickly followed by the abandonment of the system of netback pricing.